Hey guys, welcome to the podcast. We are gonna be doing another one. I got one of my most favorite people in the world, Bobby Connor. He is, gosh, he is, he's a prophet without guile. I'm like, I'm just blown away. I sit there and try to take notes. I can't really get to all the scriptures in time, so I just type them in, and then later I fill them in after you're done. But man, you get 75 in before he's done an hour message even. And uh, it's just, it's fascinating. And I am, gosh, I'm just thankful that you're here, man. I'm delighted to be here, Todd. I mean that. We love you, love and appreciate all that you're doing for the kingdom of God. And every time I get quiet before the Lord, the Lord screams into my spirit, sound the alarm, awake the warriors. And you're moving into a new dimension of warfare. And uh, I'll just tell you out front and tell everybody that's watching, you're like a a Navy SEAL or, you know, you're one of the ops, like these special ops guys, and God's going to trust you with that to release these warriors, and we're going to really try to regain truth. Scripture says truth is falling in the street, and we've got to rescue truth, get back to truth, and you're going to have a big part in that. That's right. Thank you so much. Some of the greatest warriors are That's women. So Isn't that something? Thank it's you. pretty amazing, isn't it? Amen. But God wants to do that, and he's put that anointing on you to uh, spot these dread champions and these young warriors and Amen. really get them off the sideline to the front line. Amen. And I tell you, what we have is worth defending. We've got to really defend the faith. Amen. In the book of Jude, you, you know, you ought to read it. It's only one page. I love it. I read it all oh, the yeah. time. Actually, oh, I read man. it. I read it more than a couple times it, a week. Isn't that wild? Uh, it's amazing. Jude said, "I uh, now if I'd have been Jude, I'd have never written the book like he wrote it." He said, "Jude, a common bond sl- servant of Jesus." Yeah. Now. Uh, I would have started, if I was have been Jude, I'd have been something like this. Hey, you listen to me. I've got some connections. See, Jude and Jesus came out of the same womb. Yeah, they did. Isn't that amazing? He, yeah. I'd have pulled that card, wouldn't you? Come on. But he didn't. He humbly he said, didn't. I'm a bondservant of Jesus. He said, my original intent was to write to you concerning the common salvation. Not common and worthless, but the ABCs of salvation. Right. And he said, but actually the Greek says, I got possessed. I was overtaken. I, I was under compulsion to write to you that you earnestly contend for the faith. Earnestly. Yeah, we got to earnestly contend for the faith, which was once and once for all delivered to the saints. For certain people have crept in, unawares teaching. It doesn't matter what you believe. Yeah. We know it matters what you believe. That's right. So, and right now there's such, there's so much creeping yeah, right now. Deception. Going on. Deception is rampant in the church. And I'm watching champions yeah. get taken out. Yeah. And it's not okay. No, it is Somebody not okay. Somebody needs to sound the alarm. It is alarm. not okay. Uh, one, uh, I, I know a man that uh, uh, fell out of the out of the ministry and fell uh, uh, on his third wife. And he said, well, it's the new norm. I said, no, we'll never settle for that being the new norm. Yeah. And, uh, what do you think? Because that's one of my questions. How, why do you think? And I know, I know the enemy's threatened because it's the he knows yeah, it's near. Yeah, uh-huh. It's he knows it's near. Why do you think mass deception now, as yeah. big as it's been, yeah, as big as it, as big as it is right now, because it's all across the body of Christ. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh man, it's propaganda from the news. It, it is a, a, a real uh, attack from the enemy to stop what God's going to do because God's plan is to fill this whole earth with the knowledge of the glory of His That's Son. Right. And uh, when I, we wrote the Shepherd's Rod uh, a couple of years ago, I said it's a shake-up or wake-up to get us to embrace a greater glory. And as the body of Christ is arousing to embrace a greater glory, the devil is doing everything he can to catch people in deception, catch people, you know, and there's a delusion out there that's crazy, you know, and there's all, all kind of... We need spiritual discernment loose in the church, spiritual discernment. Amen. You know, when we talk about discernment, you're talking about, you know, being able to decipher this is God, this yeah. is not God. Yeah. And it, it says that righteousness... Yeah brings our senses to the aware yeah. that we know the difference between good and evil. That's exactly and right. And the deeper we get into righteousness and the more we move into yeah. it, I've found that the clearer this thing gets and you start to view everything through the lens of righteousness. That's exactly right. And all of a sudden, like what used to be okay isn't okay it's anymore. It's not okay. You're and right. God just keeps clipping it and trimming it and making yeah. it more narrow and more narrow. Yeah. But at the same time, I feel like I'm growing in a greater awareness of his goodness yeah. and his mercy. Yeah. And it's powerful. That is so good. He's revealing himself. We've been way too familiar with a God we barely know. 
Let's say that again. We've been way too familiar with the God we barely know, but he's reintroducing himself to his people. Uh, look at uh, uh, John the Revelator on the Isle of Patmos. Uh, he's the best friend Jesus had, and there he is on the Isle of Patmos. As a pen, he's in a penal colony. But he said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And he heard behind him a voice. And it was the voice of Jesus. He turned to see Jesus and he didn't go, hey, dude, great to see you. He fell at his feet as though he was dead. And he walked with Jesus daily, every day. Yeah. So I I think we've got to quit uh, uh, being so familiar with a God we barely, barely know. Oh. I love it. Yeah, goodness. You know, I, I love, you know, when, when it goes into Second Corinthians chapter 5 and it starts talking about the day yeah. that we stand before him, that our yeah. number one ambition yeah. should be to please him here. Yeah. Because you live your life pleasing here, and when you get there, you're pleasing there yeah, already. Yeah, that's, that's wonderful. And so to live every day conscious and aware that I'm going to stand before him. Yeah. And if I realize I'm standing before him today, then that mess, that junk, that that all the shenanigans that yeah. the enemy throws your way, yeah. there's no possible way. That's it. Because we're in love with the king. That's exactly right. We love him too much to wound him with our, our, our sin. Amen. I'm telling you, uh, I, I love uh, the young people right now. I get to speak in some of the largest youth conferences like awesome. you do. And I use over there in Second uh, uh, Corinthians where it's 6 2, it says, uh, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us purify ourselves from every bit of the contamination of the flesh and of the spirit, perfecting holiness, bringing our consecration to completeness in the reverential fear of the Lord. So and I use that verse every time I speak mm. to these young people because they, they most of them want to walk right. And they, 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 they go, how do I get out of this of this grave I'm in? And That's this, right. Well, just focus on the Lord. Well, when you have leaders kind of saying, this is okay, and this is okay, and this is okay, yeah. because what's happening is the body of Christ, instead of being in union with the spirit of oh, truth, man. they're sacrificing truth on the altar of trying to be culturally relevant. Yeah. And it's absolutely horrible. Man. Yeah. The Bible said, beware when all men speak well of you. If all men are speaking well of us, somehow we're not doing our job. Because yeah, you know? Jesus said, if they hated me, they're going to hate yeah, that's you. that's right. And that's it's okay to be hated as long as you've got his yeah. love. You know, the Bible, uh, Jesus said, uh, from the time of John the Baptist, even until now, the kingdom of God suffers violent, and the violent seize it by force. Right. Now, that's not bombs, hand grenades, uh, explosives. It's prayer, fasting, and holy living. There is nothing that can really compare to being consecrated to the Lord, Amen. being holy to the Lord. Amen. And it says over and over, who shall ascend? Who shall get into the presence of the Lord? He that hath clean hands, and that's actions, and pure hearts, that's attitude. That's so right. God's got to work on our attitude and our actions. So good. So speak into that prayer and fasting thing because I, I just came off of a 40-day yeah. water fast. It was yeah. the hardest thing I've ever done. Yeah. But there were things in me that needed to die yeah. that he just took yeah. out. And I feel like there are things yeah. in the body of Christ, like in us, especially leaders. Because yeah. when you step into leadership, like it seems like it's a great thing, but the reality of it is is you're way more accountable than you ever were before. And he was given much, yeah. much, much is required. required. And That's that right there is a is a fear of the Lord, yeah. the beginning of wisdom, but it's so crucial. And like for me, <clears throat> just the fasting end, I fasted every Tuesday, Thursday. When I met you, yeah. I actually was on fasting. I was yeah. doing every Tuesday, every Thursday, yeah. every Saturday. Yeah. I did it for a decade. Yeah. And it, it wasn't religious, you know, but it, but it, and it wasn't law, yeah. but it was the way of a fasted lifestyle. Yeah. Because he didn't just tell us to fast once in a while. Yeah. I believe he told us to live a fasted lifestyle. Yeah. And that means that we're going to, like John Wesley, he wouldn't let anybody preach yeah. unless they at least fasted two days a week. Yeah. And we've got a lot of people that are saying, I'd rather feast than fast. Well, yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah. But the reality of it is, yeah. is total concentration or yeah. total consecration of everything yeah. in you. Yeah. And fasting for me is like probably one of the most intense things, but not without prayer. Because yeah. it's the prayer and fasting combination. Yeah that are the dynamic, yeah. like the dunamis yeah. bomb. I feel like an atomic yeah. bomb. Fasting will tune uh, tune your ears to hear and tune your eyes to see. Amen. And it, you shut out the world, you know. The Matthew 6, 6, Jesus said, when you uh, seek me, get in the quietest room of your house and shut the door. And we, we've got to learn how to get still before the Lord and let him speak to us. A lot of times we're so busy trying to do this, do that. But uh, just get still and quiet and so listen to what's on his heart. Amen. What did you say about multitasking? 
Oh, earlier. man, I was teaching a, a session on uh, seeking the Lord while he may be found, calling up him while he's near. And the Lord shook his finger at me and says, when it comes to uh, seeking me, I detest multitasking. Wow. And I mean, he meant it. And so I thought, boy, if we're going to seek him, let's block out everything else. That's right. And get so, in the, so the secret place. Yeah. Because I know it's one of your favorite places in yeah. the whole world. That's what we've got to do. We've got to dwell in the secret place of the Most High under the shadow of the Almighty. What's a secret place look like for you? Uh, in his presence, where you're surrounded by the Shekinah glory of God. Yeah. And you're blinded by every time he shows up, it blinds me for, you know, uh, his brilliance can't not, cannot be just gazed at. You know, uh, I'm telling you, he wants to reveal himself in a deeper dimension. It's time to embrace a greater glory. Second Corinthians 3.18 says, As we behold him with an unveiled face, we're changed from one dimension of glory to the next. Psalms 84.11 says, He will be a sun and a shield to us. No good thing will he withhold from those that are walking upright. He will give us present day favor, future glory, honor, splendor, and heavenly bliss. So as long good. as we walk with him, new dimensions open. So and, uh, good. Wow. Oh, my gosh. We need, we need to embrace him and move with every step that he's moving. Amen. So <clears throat> you now have a generation that we have. I mean, I, I, I'm glad I didn't have what they have now. The phone, the computer right here in my oh. hand that can take me anywhere in the world. Anywhere. In a second. Yeah. I've got all that. Now you got these Gen Zers. Yeah. You've got all these kids that have these five. I watched nine-year-old kids walking down the road just texting after school. You know, they're yeah. walking home. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, my gosh. Like, how can you get quiet? How yeah. can you get in your secret place yeah. with all this stuff? What do you think a key would be? For yeah. somebody that wants to go after the Lord, because there are people watching that they want they want to go after Jesus, yeah. but then the busyness of life. Yeah. Well, we got to do Psalms 46, 10, 11. Be still and know that I am God. And it's the hardest thing in our culture to get still. We're used to hearing things, seeing things, being entertained. This, we walk in, we turn something on. You know, we can't stand silence. But let's try to push all of that away. Say, Lord, I hunger for you. I thirst for you. Like the little desert deer, I long for you. Remember? And that's what we got to do. We got to hunger after God. Hunger is the key. Well, blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, they shall be filled. But if we're busy feasting on the world and the things of the world, and but Matthew six thirty three says, seek first okay. the kingdom and all these other things will fall into place. And uh, boy, multitasking won't work seeking God. We yeah. need to just, and if you just focus on one verse, Isaiah 26, 3, thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon thee. There's where the battlefield is, right that's up here. Right. As a person thinks in his heart, that's how he's going to live. And uh, we we got to guard our eye gate and our ear gate because if trash gets in here, it'll end up here, and then it'll end up here. We become doers of, uh, as, as a man thinks in his heart, that's how he's going to be. Yeah. So we've got to ask God to clean our hearts out, purify so me, clean. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Amen. And boy, he'll do it. Yes, he will. He'll put his finger on something. You know? He will. Be careful what you ask for, right? Because when you ask the Lord, Lord, I don't want any of this in me. I want. Yeah. He starts to point it out. Yeah. What I've learned in my life is that if I'm asking the Lord to help me with something, as soon as he points it out, yeah. jump. Yeah. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. Yeah. Obedience, immediate obedience. That's exactly right. And that, right. for me, has been a key in my whole yeah, life. That's the key right now. They asked me, Bobby, after 50-something years of ministry, what, what can you give me advice? I said, swift and complete obedience. Do as quickly as you can, as thoroughly as you can, anything he asks you to do. And he'll ask you sometimes to do some things that seem absurd. You go, you know, but if you follow his leadership, he'll get glory. That's right. And he's not concerned much about us, you know, uh, honestly, uh, as far as uh, uh, how we come across. It's yeah. how we present him. Yeah, he wants the pride of man to yeah. go down the yeah. tubes. It's we, were, not good. we were in a place talking about doing what God tells you to do for, and when you don't want to do it. Uh, it's crazy. I was in a big old church in Washington, D.C. They they parked the presidential helicopter right across the street from... And so I'm the only white person in the room. And there's 25 black pastors behind me sitting in wow. dressed to immaculate. Most of the people in that room were either in politics, finances, very high end. And I'm the only white guy there. Yeah. Okay, and I, the Lord, I said to the Lord, Lord, I don't have the message. He said, I'll give it to you when you stand there. <laughs> I said, Lord. He said, yes. He said, only say what I tell you to say. 
Todd, I get up there and I open my Bible. Here's all of these very sophisticated people in a uh, wonderful bay of pastors behind me. And I open my Bible like this, and the Lord said, say what I say. I said, oh, I'm so sorry. I won't be able to minister here today. You're too white for me. I'm the only white guy there. You're too white for me. I thought, oh, Lord, I can't say that. He said, say it. And I said it, and then he said, you'll have to repeat yourself because these 25 pastors go, <gasps> you can feel them going, oh, Lord, you know. Yeah. And I, I said it again. I said, I'm so sorry. I cannot preach here today. You're too white for me. And I thought, God, this is bad. You can feel all the air leaving the yeah. room. I thought, oh, God. And then all the way back over there in one of the side uh, uh, places, I hear a little bitty uh, black lady, the biggest thing about her was her hat. She comes running down through there with a white handkerchief, shaking it like that, going, Glory to God! I seize it! I seize it! And what was happening, these people were trying to clone themselves into somebody that wasn't them. Oh, See, God wow. wants them to be them, yielded to Him, That's not right. be what, what they think somebody else wants them to That's be. Right. And that little old lady saw it when she ran by there screaming, Glory to God, I see it. The Holy Ghost fell on these pastors. They Ooh. crumpled out of their seat, and revival <laughs> broke out. Wow. See, I could have got up there and winged it. You know, uh, wow. I know, but I had to say what God said say. And uh, mm. Even could, if it's uncomfortable. Oh, and, oh, I was highly uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's been a couple of times like that where uh, you don't believe God would do something like that, but he did. Yeah, he's yeah. God and he can. Oh, man. Because he knows what's going to happen when you do it. I went to a seminary. <clears throat> now I, this I is, love this. this now, is, uh, these this, are my favorite. Just bring it. I went it. to a seminary, <laughs> and the, the Lord said, uh, Bobby, I want you to only say what I say. My wife was there, and uh, we go to this seminary, and it was a— Church of God Seminary, you know, they were kind of not really into the supernatural stuff. And I said, God, I'll say anything you want me to say. That's what I said to the Lord. And I meant it. And now I know the, the Bible said, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But no. And so the Lord said, okay, when you get up there, I want you to open your Bible and say to them, your problem is you're too full of S-H-I-T. Oh, my goodness. Only I had to say it. Oh. Whew. I said, God, I, I'm, I'm not going to do it. He said, yes, you are. I said, no, I'm not going to do it. He said, yes, you are, and I go into a trance. I see every person in the room, and uh, every person. I could tell you, describe their clothing. Wow. And there was supposed to be a lady over there in a white suit. And then I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, when I get there to the platform, if everything's like it is I see in this vision, I will save what, what you said. And so I get there, and there's no white, there's no woman in a white suit over there. So I said, I'm not going to have to do it. And I hear a shuffling. You see, ushers ushering her into her seat. And she took her seat. The Lord said, okay, do what I told you. I said, oh, Lord. I get up there, and I said to him, I said, I am so sorry. I won't be able to, uh, to speak here because your problem is you're too full of, and I had to say it. Oh, my goodness. And then the Lord said, you're going to have to repeat yourself. They don't think they heard you. I had to say it twice. And there's all there's preachers out there, and the guy that invited me sitting right there. And so I just closed my stuff and went back and sat by him. And he gets up and he walks to the, the pulpit like that, and he's he's a, he's runs a whole seminary there, and he goes, I'm afraid we've heard the truth. And then years go by, and that very week, uh, there was all kind of corruption going on there. Oh, wow. uh, money-wise, immorality and stuff like that, and they were too full of dung. Oh the Bible gosh. said the king won't come into your camp if your dung is there, and that's the word. Wow. Isn't that something? And I thought, Please, God, Lord, don't say that to I, me. I'll tell Please, you what, Lord. I've gone all over the place, and a pastors are run up and said, do you know when I, he said, oh I was gosh. there when he said it? And I thought, oh, Lord, I don't want to be known for the guy that goes around telling them you're too full of hockey, no. you know. But, Man, I, 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 that's, yeah. that's scary almost. I know, but see, we've got to say what God says. And uh, that's what there's a verse in the Bible that says that in Leviticus, the king will not come into your camp if your dung is there. Wow. Paul preached a whole message on dung. Whatsoever things I call gain, I count but dung. That's what. And dung's exactly what you think it was. It's totally true. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. But we got to tell the truth about the That's truth. That's right. So in this age that, you know, right now where we're at in the church and 
the reality of just the the scandal, the gender scandal yeah. that's out there with the kids trying to yeah. get suck yeah. the kids in. It's awful. The yeah. the abortion that yeah. is, you know, they're they're saying 28 days after a baby's yeah. born they can kill yeah. the baby. Yeah. I mean, all that stuff. And why aren't more leaders? Yeah, speaking up. Why isn't the church saying something? What is happening right now? What? Okay, the answer to your problem, your your question is, uh, we're trying to blend in. It's the mixture. Yeah, the mixture. Bob Jones was told by the Lord, if I can find a people without mixture, I'll pour out my power without measure. Mm. And so the devil tries to contaminate us with compromise, <sighs> and we got to stand for truth. And. Uh, Years ago, now this I'm gonna tell you. I'll tell you where the seed of this happened. <clears throat> Years ago, we, I was invited by Rick Jorner to go up to Colorado Springs for a meeting with with a whole bunch of well known, world famous preachers, and they were going to be talking about the super seeker friendly church. And so I'm just a tag along. I wasn't invited to the meeting. I came with Rick, drug me up there. And so here we go. They're all around there, and they're telling about how that, that'll benefit if we'll come up with a gospel that's not in, you know, not intrusive oh and gosh. that makes people feel ill at ease and, you know, and keep them in the, the ministry time to like 15 minutes. They did the whole uh, layout for the super seeker friendly church. And they got to Rick. And uh, I pushed myself out of the way like this. Rick was right here, and I pushed myself out of the way because I'm not, I'm not. And and they said, no, no, Bobby, you're here. We'd like to hear what you've got to say. Oh, man. And here's what I said to him. I said, what you men are concocting here is going to will, woefully fail the body of Christ. And boy, they all turned their, they were through with that. I said, you'll woefully fail the body of Christ. And there's Rick. And so Rick's responsible because he brought me. And so Rick goes, hmm. Said, I'm afraid I'm going to have to agree with Bobby. And then after that, the quickest way to build a mega church was super seeker friendly, wasn't it? You know. But uh, Heibel and those guys later wrote an apology to the body of Christ. And here's what the letter said We're so sorry. We thought that the super seeker friendly church would make disciples, but we only made, uh, we, we only made uh, church members and didn't push them into discipleship and we woefully failed the body of Christ use the same words we used so that's where some of that got into us you know yeah. well you know let's don't be let's don't be controversial listen we've got to be controversial that's right really there's one way to heaven he said I am the way the truth the life no man comes to the Father. you can't skip you can't skip what he said that's right but now people are going well you know uh, we don't want uh, you know the media will censor our, our podcast or we can't we got to tell the truth about the truth and be bold and brave and that's very right. courageous that's right uh, it can't uh, the price can't be too high to pay and uh, and uh, listen I'm telling you uh, that's what that special ops thing that I told you Amen. about you're going to come up with plans and strategies to help train these warriors where they won't put up with all this uh, uh, psycho babbling mess that's going on yeah I really I really feel like it's a that LCU here yeah is like the cave of Adullam yeah where all those broken and contrite people yeah. came yeah. but they left yeah warriors yeah we got to raise the warriors. I'll guarantee you that. And uh, I'm amazed. Some of, some of these little bitty skinny girls are great warriors in the spirit. I tell you, they are fearless. That's right. And I love that. And I love these young people that are sold out to God. Yeah. You know, nothing's too big of a challenge for them. It's, it's amazing. I love that. And uh, I love the opportunity that we're in right now. But we can't sit on the sideline and go, oh, man, it's such a daunting task. I don't want to get involved in it. God said, we're going to get into the presence of God let the presence of God get into us and we're going to we're going to jump this thing of just simply surviving and we're going to start thriving that's right and uh, we're going to see evangelism on a dimension we've never seen before amen the Lord said I'm going to release a move of my spirit into the millennials and it's going to be uh, through uh, people that uh, challenge them amen he, I'll tell you what God's going to do he's going to turn the holy reverential fear of the Lord upon the millennials uh Oh, I went into a trance. If we got time to do it, sure. we, I went into a trance. And me and a guy named Gary Keller, he's a great uh, spiritual father in uh, Switzerland. And in this trance, uh, I'm at a kitchen window looking out this window, and I see Gary Keller walking across a field, a, a, a nice mowed field. And I thought, well, Gary's here. And so I step out of the, uh, away from the window and step down the porch, and Gary's right there. And he's got two longbows, big old longbows. And he's got some, uh, he said, uh, I'm here because me and you are supposed to shoot these arrows. I said, what arrows? And he said, these, and pulled out some arrows right out of his chest. And they had fluffy uh, 
feathers on the end of them, and uh, on the the point of them was key a uh, keys, you know, like that. I thought, okay, and the bows were big, and I thought, I don't know if we can pull them back or not. And uh, he, he said, we're supposed to pull them back and shoot simultaneous at the same time. So it was like pulling back just a rubber band. And we let them go like this, and the arrows took off, and they're just, they're roaring. <sighs> like this, these two arrows. And I look, and where we've shot is a field full of millennials. Yeah. I mean, thousands of them. They're on blankets. They're, ha they're, they're eating chips, and, you know, they're, they're not doing anything dirty and nasty, but they're not doing anything beneficial. They're just chilling out. Out yeah, in like this field, have, yeah. Just, yeah, and here comes these uh, arrows, and I thought, <clears throat> oh no, it's going to fall in uh, on these millennials, but it didn't. There was a big wire cage there, a big wire cage that had two locks on each side, and in the wire cage was a big she bear. I mean, big bear, and I thought, oh Lord, and those two arrows went into those locks and did like that, and unlocked the cage, and the door fell down, and here goes the bear looks at all those millennials, and here they go, tearing the grass, running towards the millennials. I thought, oh, my God, what have we released on these millennials? And the she-bear in the cage represents the holy, reverential fear of the Lord. Come on. And that's what's, on, that's what's going to come. Woo. Oh, and, this, and this bear runs out there to those millennials and started licking them and curring them. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the Lord told me, said, I want you to start announcing I've got a mighty move of God coming for the millennials that's going to shake up things. Wow. And they're not going to be satisfied for uh, new trinkets and toys. They're Come going on. to want the holy fear of God Come evident on. among the people. So good. Oh. <laughs> do you, do you want to be one of those? I mean, do you want to be one of those millennials that walks in the fear of the Lord? Do you want to be one that's possessed by the reverential awe of God? Man, I do. I'm going after Jesus with everything yes, in me. Yes. Won't you? Guys, bless you. Thanks for coming today. We Have welcome you guys. We love you. Tune in next time, man. But right now, go after Jesus because the she bear's coming. <laughs> bless you. Yeah. <laughs> that was good. Yeah, Holy a, mackerel. Yeah. <laughs> oh years years ago, I.